Who is the silent sheepdog? Why is the silent sheepdog? Where is the silent sheepdog? I'm right here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being stupid. I'm just letting you know, this is probably gonna be a long video. So strap in, grab some popcorn, and let's get to talking. So every time my username comes up, the silent sheepdog, people ask why, or they laugh, they think it's funny. Um, I always get the question, you're a voice actor, why would you choose the name the silent sheepdog? That will be explained. Uh, 2019 or later. I can't remember exactly my whole life in the past, god, like five years is a blur. I created a TikTok. I wanted to rebrand. I wanted a different name and I wanted to serve a purpose. So I created the Silent Sheepdog on TikTok. I started from scratch. I had 30,000 followers. I thought they'd come along. They did not. <laughs> so I'm rebuilding from scratch. I've, I've been rebuilding since then. Um, and yeah, so I created the YouTube account shortly after, I believe. The reason why I created the Silent Sheepdog was because I wanted to serve a purpose. I wanted to, I wanted the Silent Sheepdog to stand for something in itself and in the name. If you don't know by now, because I do bring it up often, I am a Christian. I, I, I guess the best way to say it is a recommitted or re reformed uh, Christian. So I grew up Southern Baptist and I never really took God seriously, you know, because as a kid, most children, I've seen some very wise and blessed young people um but as a kid most of the time you just don't care about stuff like that you know you just want to have fun and live and you go to school and you want to play video games and go outside and talk to your friends like you don't care about that kind of stuff when you're a kid and i went to church i didn't like it i hated it i hated church i was always an outcast i was an outcast in my life i was an outcast in my friend groups i was an outcast in church um yeah like i i, I get these people who are like oh christians are terrible people and this and that with church like, guys, they do it to their own kind. <laughs> like, it, it's not just non-believing people. And these were people who knew my family. Um, everybody just always looked at me weird, and I was always the weird kid, and I was always the weird kid in um, Montessori, and, you know, like, what, like, uh, like, the children's church, you know what I mean? Like, nobody ever sat by me, nobody ever talked by me. I was always a very lonely kid, even in the church where community was supposed to be the thing we we went to church we stopped going to church maybe when i was six or seven years old uh, but we went for most of the my young years i accepted jesus into my heart when i was really young Sing, single digits i'm pretty sure yeah because it was before my parents divorced um so i was i was younger than eight um and honestly i didn't have to i just did like, as a child, I was like, this feels like the right thing to do. So I did. Um, so I guess you could say I've been a Christian because I was raised up Christian and I accepted Jesus at a very young age. But I never took it seriously because I didn't understand. I, I didn't have that knowledge yet. I didn't have that wisdom yet. So go all the way to about 2017 to about 2019, 2020-ish. I lived most of my life believing in God, but never really understanding him. I never read my Bible, uh, all of that. And I had this really weird, vague idea of God. And I, I prayed and all that stuff. Um, eventually, I fell into New Age spirituality for about a year. I have done some very questionable things. I've done a lot of things that... I never thought I would do like if you told younger me this is what older you is going to do to survive out of fear and panic and desperation I would probably not believe you or look at you in absolute shock I became so in the world that it consumed me. It consumed who I was. It consumed the way I live. It consumed the way I thought. Um, I just completely forgot about God. And eventually I fell into New Age spirituality. And, you know, crystals and bowls and all of this stuff. Like, I got in... I, I, I wouldn't say I was, like, deep, deep. Like, I wasn't doing, like, rituals and stuff. 
but I believed in the universe and I thought the universe was God and God forgive me this is just a testimony um but I, I believe the universe was God I fully believed in Jesus too and I was trying to, which is, which is, if you're a Christian and you know, like, or you've been through something like this, it sounds insane, right? Because it was, it, it was like, all these beliefs that I had were conflicting. And I thought I was smart enough and enlightened to connect the dots. You know what I mean? And one night, in one of my darkest hours, when I was not even neck deep, I was... I was eye deep. I was blind at that point. I was so blind because I was so, I was blinded. I, I was so, I had a, I had a opaque black cloth over my eyes. I thought I was enlightened and I, I was so blind and so misled and, and, and prideful, prideful. And, and I thought I was like, right, right. Um, one night, I was sitting at my computer crying because I was doing some of the things I never thought I would do. And I felt a presence above me, this overwhelming, terrifying, not in like a scary, demonic, oppressive way, but oppressive in a conviction sense. Like your parent catching you doing something they told you not to do or when you were a kid and you did something bad and like you don't know why it was bad but you were like oh I probably shouldn't have done that I really hope my mom doesn't see and like my mom walks in and they're like I can't believe you what have you done like kind of <laughs> energy right and I felt crushed in my spirit in my being I felt broken I felt ashamed I felt convicted right and I remember it was just like it wasn't like an audible voice but like a, like a speaking to your inner person right and it was like stop you know this is wrong this has to come to an end that's essentially like that's what I heard it was like this needs to stop this is enough and I'm here to stop it and I got on my knees and I bawled. I broke. I broke down. I broke. I was on the floor wailing, crying my eyes out. Like, like I found out the world had blown up and everybody I loved was dead. Like, imagine despair. That was me. It all culminated into that one moment. And all I could say was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, like, and I'm not, I'm not dramatizing it. In fact, like, I'm toning it down. <laughs> but like, I was, I was begging, begging for forgiveness. And my boyfriend that I was living with at the time was outside smoking a cigar. I don't think he, he even knows this happened. I really don't. Like, I, I, I fell apart. And I think it was like, after that. I, s I got this urgency to go buy a Bible. Like, like God himself was like, this is all false. This is wrong. And like, this needs to be fixed. And I knew it was God talking to me. So I went and I bought a Bible. I started doing some research. I went in my closet and I made a prayer space. I always heard about like prayer closets and stuff like that. I went and I made a war room. I posted scripture notes, um, had my Bible and a little candle with me for light. And I would sit in there and I would pray to God. And I just prayed to God, like, reveal yourself to me. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Um, show me the falsehoods that I've been believing and show me the truths. And I went ham on my Bible. Like I just, I, I went in and I actually, for the first time in my life, read the Bible and studied it. And when I tell you, I've had, I had so many times in that closet where I broke down saying, I'm so sorry. I was so deceived. Like, I can't believe I said the things I said about you. I like, 
you know how they say like the number one unforgivable sin is blasphemy oh oh even to this day the weight of it i know i'm forgiven because i did it in absolute ignorance and just being misled by the world and i would never do it again not with what i know now not with the way i understand how the way it made me feel really is um when i tell you blasphemy blasphemy i and i'm not making light i'm just laughing it off because it's like oh my god you know like and just begging for forgiveness so many times i was on my face on my knees crying begging jesus please forgive me please come into my life fix everything like i i, I messed up <laughs> up please protect me because guys i've had stuff on my life my entire life like spiritual attacks and warfare demons all that stuff if you don't believe in that that's fine you probably wouldn't have come this far if you don't believe in that um but in the video i mean but like if you do believe in that kind of stuff and you've been through it or you you know about these kind of powers you know what i'm talking about and i had another thing i forgot to mention earlier like part of what also this happened before the breakdown but i was i had a pendulum right and if you know anything about spirituality it's like a communication device essentially with your spirit guides and i was looking for answers on something like a job or employment or something and i had essentially communicated with demons possibly even the devil himself like i know that sounds crazy but i got yes answers to very evil 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 like very evil answers to innocent questions and something in my spirit knew i was like hang on something ain't adding up something ain't right like those were the turning points that led me to pursuing my christianity in a purer truer sense so that that is the backstory to who the silent sheepdog is when I say I created the silent sheepdog to evangelize, um, I am not a big, I'm not a big street preacher. I think I'm a decent speaker. Um, it's just, I am not the kind of person who can like go up and be like, uh, here's a Bible, except Jesus, Jesus loves you. I never was that kind of person. And I feel like it's very in your face. Some people can do it loud and proud and do it well and be convincing. I don't think I can. I, I don't think that's me. I've always been quiet. I've always been an introvert. I've always been very withdrawn, um, nervous about approaching people in public, um, especially being loud in the center of attention. I never really liked to be the center of, at of attention unless I had to be, or it was in a good context, like being on stage and performing and stuff like that. But like, I expect the eyes on me. You know what I mean? If I'm out in public, I don't want you looking at me. Like <laughs> I've had people stare at me my whole life and I'm just like, <laughs> why are you staring at me? <laughs> um, and so I, when I made this account, I was like, what is going to describe the best way I can evangelize people in the best way I can imagine and, and, and perform in? And so I was like, God, God is the goal and Jesus is the shepherd, right? And I'm like, I can't be a preacher or a pastor or whatever. That's not, I'm not built for that. And I was like, but I can lead sheep. Why don't I? Why don't I I'd just be like, I, I might not be a shepherd, but why don't I be the sheepdog? Help bring people to the people who do know more, to the people who do know what they're talking about, who, who have more spiritual knowledge than me. So I was like, yeah, yeah, sheep, sheepdog. Yeah, I'll be a sheepdog. And so I was, and, and I love sheepdogs. Like I love dogs. I love dogs in general. Like if you know me, I love dogs. Dogs are my favorite animal. Like I, I, I have extensive <laughs> extensive extensive knowledge and passion about dogs and they have such a huge part in my life and I was like yeah I'll be a sheep dog but I'm like I can't just be sheep dog I'm like first of all that name's probably taken and then I'm like nah I gotta get more creative with it than that right so I was like okay well how what about my event what, what else about my evangelism and bringing people to Christ can I Put into this name right 
And so I was, I was like, well, I would like to lead people to Christ, to lead people to Jesus and salvation through the talents that God gave me and who I am and who I will be in the future. And I said, I want to do it quietly and silently. I want to lead people through example and I want to lead people through proof, through testimony. And I want people to feel the same quieting, loving draw to Christ that I did. I said, I will be the silent sheepdog. I will draw people to Christ and evangelize silently. And that's how I came up with the silent sheepdog. <laughs> like it's, I guess I made it, I mean, we're like 17 minutes in, so I guess it, it's kind of a big story, kind of not. It's mostly just a lot of backstory and context leading up to it. But like literally in that moment, that's, that's how I came up with the silent sheepdog. I wouldn't say it's like deep, <laughs> but like, that's that's why and that's why the silent sheepdog means a lot to me i'm not a perfect christian <laughs> like by a landslide like but that is why like that's why i am the silent sheepdog and everybody just calls me sheepdog which is fine and i think it's a cool unique fun cute name I like it. I like being called sheepdog. I like the ring that it has to it. Even even non-contextually, I just think it's fun and it's unique. But like, that is the whole story of the silent sheepdog and how I became the silent sheepdog. And I would like to carry that title to my grave and make something great about it. Um, even if I don't evangelize some people with my, my name and, and what I stand for, I am still me. If you like my channel and my content and my humor and my gaming, like, I, I would hope that you still follow me and accept me for who I am. My whole goal is to entertain and to be me and, and document and grow and be better as a person, as a creator, as a performer, but I just, I want it all to culminate hopefully into something I can give you. If you are a non-believer, if you are somebody who's on the fence about God, if you were like me, or you were a, a misled or misinformed Christian, or maybe even you're just a Christian looking for hope and I don't know, like you're looking for something, right? Like, I just hope that my life can be a living testimony for that. God put us all on this earth individually for a reason. He made all of us hand by hand. And he made me to be a performer and a creator. And I want to make my talents as 100% platinum coated gold star you know what i mean like i want to make the most of what he has gifted me with as far as speaking voiceover acting drawing dancing singing all of these things i love and are passionate about and, and people I, I i might not seem like it but i love people i'm passionate about people i'm passionate about helping people and 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 making their time here on earth great and hopefully bringing them into a even greater time in heaven when our time here passes and even for people who don't evangelize, I, I just, I, I love them equally. And I, have, and I want to make them smile. And like, I just want to spread happiness. And I just, and I just want to use my gifts to the full extent of what I've been given because I'm only here on this earth for a short amount of time. And I've spent a lot of my life suffering. Excuse me if I cry. Um, I spent a lot like, I'm gonna tell you, 95, 95, 97% of my life suffering, seeing how awful this world is. Um, and I just don't want to be a darkness in this world. I want to be the light of the world. I want to be the salt of the earth. And I want 
to bring people to God because I want them to prosper. I want them to walk in their best life that God has planned for them. And I want them to be saved. This goes beyond life. This goes into eternal life. Like my goals, my goals are eternal. Um, and am, am I doing the best job at it? I don't know. But I'm, I'm doing my best. And I do pray about it. And I care about every single person I talk to. And, I'm, and I, I work every day towards forgiveness and love and grace, like a biblical forgiveness and love and grace. And I'm human. <laughs> I can't do everything. I can't do everything right. I do a lot of stuff wrong on a daily basis. But I just want you guys to know that I hope you stick around. Whether you follow me for that reason or not. I just want you guys to be happy. And I want to make your day better. I want to make you laugh. I want to make you cry in a good way. I want to inspire you. I want to help you get saved. I want to help you prosper. But yeah, I think I'm kind of repeating myself at this point. But from the heart, no script. All I had was notes just to kind of help me organize my thoughts a little bit. But most of like, I, yeah, that's all that was. I, I haven't even really been looking at them. I've been speaking purely from the heart and just uh, context and, and story. But yeah, so now you know. <laughs> now you know who the silent, sh silent sheepdog is and why the silent sheepdog is. So I hope that answers your question. But all in all, every day is a new day. And thank you for sitting here for about 20 odd minutes watching. Uh, thank you for listening to the whole story if you did. I hope that it inspires you. I hope it answers your questions. And I hope you stick around. Um, even if you're not a Christian, I welcome everyone. I welcome Satanists, atheists, Muslims. I don't really know a whole lot of other religions. <laughs> Buddhists, uh, uh, Hindu, Hindus. Um, wherever you come from, you are welcome here. You're welcome on my channel. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to enjoy. I welcome everyone. So you're welcome to stay and I hope you stay and I hope you have a blessed and beautiful day. And uh, yeah, go with grace and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>